Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about great storytelling uh, and give you a review of the novel The Blackboard Jungle by Evan Hunter. So long time viewers of the channel will have got tired of me saying that Evan Hunter slash Ed McBain, because he wrote under both names, uh, is my favourite author. This is an early novel by him, so I'm a huge fan of his 87th Precinct mystery series, um, but hadn't read that many of his standalone novels. So he published under the under the pseudonym Ed McBain crime novels um, and more uh, kind of serious, I guess, non-genre fiction under the name Evan Hunter. Um, Blackboard Jungle was the first book he published as Evan Hunter. It came out in 1955, so it's pretty old now, getting on for 70 years old. Um, and it is fantastic. So I read it last weekend and I absolutely loved it. Um, and it, it inspired me to, to make this video that's not just a review of, of this book, but a discussion, I think, of, hopefully, <laughs> you can be the judge of that, a discussion of storytelling and what makes good storytelling. Um so let me talk first a little bit about the, the plot of the book. And I think the plot in this book is important because the plot is a very everyday plot. It's a plot we've seen again and again and again. Um, and this may, you know, I think this is one of the earlier works that, that use this particular storyline. Um, but it is one that's very familiar to us. So the book, very simply, is about a young idealistic teacher who goes to work in a rough school and wants to get through to the kids uh, and you know make an impression on the kids and make a difference to their lives so that is a story that we've seen you know as i say we've seen it again and again and again to the extent that it's something of a cliche um the black Bowl jungle is like i said a fairly early entry in that kind of cycle of, of stories about this subject um but i thought it was just beautifully done um, and as a result, a, a really great novel and a novel that was was worth me talking about. What I think is also interesting about this book is, so it was filmed a couple of years, I think within a couple of years of it coming out, you know, it was a big hit when it came out. Um, it was filmed. Uh, the film is, is noted for being, I think... Um, the first film to feature, um, or one of the one of the first big films to feature a rock and roll song on the on the on the soundtrack. Uh, so I think it's "Rock Around the Clock" by Bill Haley and the Comets appears in the movie, um, and it very much taps into that kind of juvenile delinquent um, kind of fascination that there was in, in popular culture in the fifties. Um, so you know the kids in this in this book would definitely be described as juvenile delinquents. And the, the school that the teacher teaches at is what's referred to as a trade school. So it's not a school that kids go to necessarily for an academic education. It's a school that kids go to to learn a trade. And, and a lot of the kids in this are learning to be mechanics. Um, but but there is still, you know, there are still more academic subjects on the curriculum. Um, and the teacher in this is an English teacher. Um, so let's talk quickly about the characters. And so that's the basic setup of the, of the plot. And, and the plot is not really much more complex than that, with a, with a couple of exceptions, which are around characters. So there are three main characters in this book. And these three characters really drive the story. So the main character, obviously, is the teacher, Rick Daddier. Um, and the, the story is very much told from his perspective. So written in the third person, but he is the, the driving character in almost every scene. Um, and it is the, the world of the school is, is introduced to you as the reader through his eyes. So all the events in the book, pretty much, you see through, through Rick's eyes. And a lot of the book is taken up with his analysis of, of what's happening and his analysis of the actions of other characters. Um, so the two other main characters are one of the kids, um, Miller, uh, who's a black kid, who is um, something of a troublemaker in class um, and becomes someone who who kind of embodies Rick's desire to get through to these kids um, and to, to make their lives better and to, you know, to educate them. Um, so Miller is probably the, you know, the secondary character after Rick. And then the third important character in terms of the storyline is, is another teacher at the school called Lois. So you get this. Um, so, so Rick is the central character and there are really two plots in the book revolving around Rick. So one is his uh, this ongoing kind of battle he has with with Miller and with the other kids in the class to 
to um, to to impose his authority on them and to get them interested in what he's trying to teach them and to you know to make that teaching connection with them. Um, so that's the main plot. And then the secondary plot is around Lois, who's a single female teacher at the school who takes a liking to Rick um, and is, is trying to basically seduce him. So Rick is, is married, he's a married guy, his wife is pregnant. Um, and indeed, the, the, the story of the book kind of builds up to the end of her pregnancy and the birth of their child. Um, so you've got these two competing storylines going on. Rick is central to both of them. And what I think is really fascinating in the book is because it's very much told from Rick's perspective, you don't really know what is driving Lois and Miller to, you know, to, to have the interactions they have with Rick. So where where you do get supposition, I guess, in the book about why they're doing the things that they do, it comes from Rick. So a lot of it is very much about Rick's interpretation of, of the actions of other characters. And in particular, with Miller, you get this young, you know, teenage guy who is um, who is a lot brighter than a lot of the other kids in the school, but nevertheless is a troublemaker. Um, and his race plays a really important part in the story. And one of the real tensions for me as a modern reader was to see how well Evan Hunter handled that topic of race. And, and I actually think he does a really good job of it. And I think the book still stands up quite well today as a, as a discussion of race and prejudice and you know the, the fact that certain groups in our society are still to this day disadvantaged. Um, and, and how that can have an impact on both the behaviour of individuals within those groups and also how other people treat members of those groups so really interesting discussion of race what's less well handled in this book i have to say is some of the discussion of kind of sexual politics and things like that so there is a there's an attempted rape scene fairly early on in the book which becomes kind of pivotal to to the storyline involving uh, involving rick, rick and lois um which i thought was the, the actual the, the attempted rape scene, I think, is reasonably well done. But a lot of what happens after that is is not terribly well done. And there is discussion of, of rape and the concept of women being complicit in their own rape in this book, which is pretty appalling, to be honest with you. And, and I think, you know, trigger warning, I, I think that is something that could be a big enough blocker for, for many people in reading this book so if you think that if, if you think that's something you're going to have a particular um, a particularly strong reaction to I, I would recommend not reading the book um, but aside from that and that is a that is a big thing to say aside from um, aside from that I thought this was a really really excellent book and I think one of the reasons it works so well as a story um, is because of that connection you build with the characters and um, because you don't really know, you only know what Rick is thinking, you really um, come to associate with Rick and to care for Rick and to care about the battles he's fighting and to, to become really invested in his desire to, to break through to these, these kids at the school. And also his gradual, um, there's this wonderful gradual revelation as the book progresses where he realises just how broken the education system is. And that gradual, you know, coming to understanding of the central character kind of transforms him a bit as a character from someone who at the start of the book is somewhat naive and idealistic to someone who has a much broader view of, of the world. So he matures as a character in a really interesting way. Um, but as I said, I think Miller is the most interesting character and what Evan Hunter does with his character over the course of the book and, and the way you gradually learn more and more about him, I thought was beautifully handled. And I think for me, that's the essence of, of good storytelling. So as I've said, the story here is a pretty basic one. It's one we've seen time and again. Um, and you'd think, wouldn't you, that, that storytelling should be about the story. But in this book, I don't think it is. I think storytelling here is about how that story is told and particular, particularly how the author helps you as a reader to build connections with the characters in the story so that you become fully invested in the story. So it's not so much about the events that happen as, in, as important as those are, but it's about you internalising the impact of those events on the characters in the book so that you really feel 
you you feel you know when this book hits a beat when it hits a high note you feel it and whether that's a whether that's a, a positive thing or a negative thing you feel it i really felt it in this book and i'm not ashamed to say this book made me cry so there are two moments at the end of this book and they come very close to each other and that kind of one two punch works brilliantly um where i was really <laughs> i was really quite emotional um he just does it beautifully and and i think part of it is that um part of it is that connection that you build with the characters but there's also something about the pacing of the story that works really really well in that so much of it is just build up but build up that is fascinating where you really want to know what happens next and when you do get to the end when you do get to the conclusion and all you know or both of the the storylines i've talked about you know conclude satisfyingly by the end um when you do get to that point it just works perfectly and all the pieces get get drawn together again um, to make for a very satisfying conclusion to the book and I think you know reflecting back on the book uh, in, in preparing for this review I was thinking about what what is it that's so universally appealing about this book um, and I think it's the fact that it, it talks to our very human desire to look after the young people in our society, to recognise that you know the, the youth of our society is its future, and to make sure that we are doing everything we can for the young people in our society to um, you know to, to set them to set them up for success, even when they don't necessarily want that. Um, and as you know, as a parent of a teenager, um, I think maybe it resonated with me particularly because of that. But you do. You do feel that as a parent, that desire to, um, you know, for your children to have the best in life. But they, you know, they don't always get, do they, um, why certain things are good for them. You know, why, why should I eat my greens, um, for example? So I think that's a very natural, very human thing um, to, to, to think about and to consider how we can make the world as, as good a place as possible for future generations. And that's something that really comes up again and again in this in this book both in terms of rick's interactions with his students but also his growing understanding of how broken the whole you know that the, the whole environment that the school operates in is um, and why that is you know why that is not setting the not you know despite his efforts as an individual teacher why that is not going to set the kids up for success in the future so yeah, really, really enjoyable and interesting book. It does come with that that one warning about the handling of rape, which I do think was was very poorly done in the book. But aside from that, I thought it was a really exceptional novel, and and I do think it's a shame that it's a, it's a kind of a forgotten book. You know, it's not a book you hear people talking about, and I suspect that it were it not for the the success of the film, you know, in its day, and and the fact that the film is still kind of remembered, um, I suspect the book wouldn't be in print anymore, which would be a, a crying shame. Um, so definitely worth checking out if you like good storytelling and particularly if you like that kind of mid 20th century style of storytelling which is fairly simple this is this is not a simple book there's no you know there's no particular flourishes and things like that as i sold it's, it as i said it pretty much all told from the perspective of one character there is one scene that isn't told from rick's perspective which is a scene when some of the kids just kind of explode and get completely out of control and that was an enormously powerful scene both because of what happens in that scene and, and the kind of violence that's enacted but also because um because rick isn't there because you, you feel that absence of Rick in that scene. You almost feel like if Rick was there, things would turn out all right, but he's not there. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really well handled. So, yeah, a, a, a book I definitely recommend. OK, time for a random book from the shelves. Today's book is, a, is another book which has, I think, a very simple story at its heart, but one that is very, very well told. Um, albeit in this case, there are a few more kind of flourishes to the telling than there are in the Black Bull Jungle. Um, anyway, that book is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver, which is a, a book about um, the relationship between a, a mother and her son um, and a, a school shooting that, that happened. So a really chilling and effective book. Uh, and like the Black Bull Jungle, very, very well told. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know if you've read The Black Ball Jungle or other Evan Hunter books. Let me know what you thought of them. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.